Imagine for a moment that your doctor diagnosed you with kidney disease. You will need to take this medication, he tells you. It's for your kidneys. Everyone takes it. More than 15 million CKD patients around the world. Don't worry, you'll be fine. But then, you are not fine. In just 18 months after starting the medication, your creatinine jumps from 1.30 to 1.87. You just lost 40% of your kidney function and you are really close to kidney failure now. Nothing is fine. Until you stop the medications and your kidney function literally doubles in five months. And yes, this is actually happen. Are 15 million CKD patients risking renal failure for nothing? Catherine here, this is the question I want to answer today. Are 15 million CKD patients risking their kidneys by taking one of the most commonly prescribed medications? What prompted me to make this video is a study recently published on the medical journal Curious. Now, what this study found out about one of the most common medications for CKD patients was quite a shock. So sit tight and let's see what we can do to mitigate the damage. I'll start by saying that this is a controversial topic in the medical world today. You see, while the author of this study is a renowned nephrologist from the University of Vermont Medical Center, he was actually bowled out of conferences when he talked about his findings. Is the grip of Big Pharma so strong on doctors that they don't even want to know the truth? I mean, it's almost like some doctors don't want to be called out when they make a mistake, especially if it's a mistake that could send 15 million CKD patients into renal failure. But despite the peer pressure, the author still succeeded in publishing his study about the dangers these very common medications pose. And now the facts stand out in bold black and white on the page for everyone to read. Now guys, just a quick warning before we see what this is all about. This is probably about a medication you are actually taking right now. If this is the case, don't freak out and most importantly, don't stop taking it without your doctor's explicit approval. So what is this all about? What are the very common medications that may be causing kidney damage in a large number of patients? What the author of the study refers to when he says renin, angiotensin, aldosterone or RAS blockade is nothing more than your ACE inhibitors such as lisinopril, enalapril and so on. And also ARBs such as losartan, volsartan and so on. These are also known as sardans, in particular the medication that the patient in the intro discontinued in order to get their kidney function back was losartan. This is important, we will see why later on in this video. Now, RAS blockers are more than just lisinopril, enalipril, and losartan. So I've put a list on screen. If you are taking any of these, please get informed very well about the possible side effects. So question, are you taking one of these medications? Do you plan to talk to your doctor about them after watching this video? Let's talk about it in comment section. And these medications are very controversial today as we have seen. I mean, if any doctor is watching me, they are probably booing me from their own homes right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, oh, shit, chill out! Yeah, we died! Yo! Yo! But this won't stop me. Because this is absolutely not the first study coming out to tell us that, at least for some patients, it will be better not to take ACE inhibitors or ARBs at all. Especially, but not just, people with advanced kidney disease. 
Because while these medications are supposed to protect the kidneys, some studies found out that the damage they do over time is basically on par with their kidney protecting ability. But that's not all, because as we have seen, for some patients taking these medications may cause very rapid decline in kidney function called acute kidney injury. This damage will only stop when the medication is suspended. But here comes the problem. If a doctor saw a patient with this kind of fast loss of kidney function, they would consider it inexplicable because the markers of the usual causes of acute kidney injury are not present here, all right? So most doctors in this case won't admit that the prescription medication is causing all the damage. So is this why they were so mad at the author of this study then? Because doctors can't unload all the blame on the patient anymore now? In fact, in the case of the patient featured in this report, the cause of the damage was correctly identified. It was the Lusartan. When the patient stopped the Lusartan, his kidney function doubled and he was able to avoid dialysis. And by the way guys, Lusartan is not even the most dangerous arm out there. We will see which one of these is the most likely to cause kidney failure in the next part of the video. And you will want to make sure you are not taking that one. Because, I mean, how many patients are taking these medications today and will end with kidney failure without ever knowing why? And maybe the worst part here is that there is a supplement that can achieve the same effect these medications are aiming at, which is blocking the renin angiotensin aldosterone system, but without causing any kidney damage. Yes, today we will also see how to mitigate the possible side effects of these medications and how to avoid the danger altogether. In short, very common medications such as lisinopril, enalipril, and losartan are now linked to very fast kidney damage. The damage can be stopped, but doctors are not trained to suspend the medication in these cases. Very important question, what signs should you be on the lookout for if you are taking an ACE inhibitor or an ARB? So it's clear in my opinion that if doctors don't want to be informed about this danger, I mean, they are not the ones risking dialysis, the patients must be informed then. So if your goal is to protect your kidneys, there are a few things you should be on the lookout for. Now I want to be very clear on this. Acute kidney injury doesn't happen to every single CKD patient when they take these medications. Not everyone is going to lose 25 points of GFR in 4 months after starting Losartan. It can happen though. There are many documented cases. As we can see, the nephrologist that published this study was able to put together 71 patients that were actually suffering from RAS blockers related acute kidney injury. What this tells us is that this problem is way more common than it is actually believed. So not everyone will suffer acute kidney injury or fast kidney damage, but clearly most patients will experience some side effects, sometimes serious, from taking an ACE inhibitor or an ARB. So how can you make sure your kidneys are not suffering from rapid damage? Well, first of all, if you have recently started taking an ACE inhibitor or an ARB, make sure your kidney function is being monitored very often, alright? Frankly, if it were me, I will be taking a creatinine test every month after starting one of these or any other medication. I mean, creatinine tests are cheap, renal replacement therapy is not. Also, always test your potassium levels. This is very important. Look, for too long, CKD patients have been lied to about potassium with fruit and veggies blamed for raising potassium levels. Let me know in comment section if you have ever been told that eating that extra banana or that baked potato could stop your heart. But let's face it, 
that kind of advice wasn't meant to help you at all. It was just a way to shift the blame on you for the failure of the whole healthcare industry. In fact, if you read the label of your ACE inhibitor or of your ARB, you will find something like this among the side effects. These prescriptions will raise your serum potassium level, right? This is an incredibly common side effect and it's also very dangerous. Unfortunately, some doctors will still tell their patients to stop eating fruit and veggies when they see that potassium levels are too high. But we have seen many times how important it is to actually eat lots of fruit and veggies in order to protect the kidneys. So if your doctor gives you one of these medications and then tells you to stop eating bananas, go find another doctor. Medications are the most common cause of hyperkalemia, not bananas. In short, if you have been recently prescribed an ARB or an ACE inhibitor, make sure you are testing your creatinine very often. In any case, keep in mind that these medications are also the most common cause of high potassium levels. Now guys, it's also clear that even if these medications have dangers, they are still effective. They do lower your blood pressure. They do offer some kidney protecting benefit, especially for certain patients. But most importantly, they are still incredibly common and many patients take them without experiencing serious side effects. And if you are one of these patients and you don't want to stop taking a medication that works for you, fine. There are a few steps you can take to reduce the dangers associated with these medications. So first of all, how do we reduce the danger of acute kidney injury or fast damage to the kidneys? Look, the way ACE inhibitors and ARBs cause damage is by reducing blood flow to the kidneys. This effect is severally amplified when combining one of these medications with an NSAID. And well, you should never take NSAIDs if you have kidney disease, but especially if you also take ACE inhibitors or ARBs. NSAIDs are common over-the-counter pain medications such as aspirin, ibuprofen, nafroxen, and many more. Never take them, especially with ACE inhibitors or ARBs. That will be a double whammy. The other thing you should be very mindful of is hydration. If you are dehydrated, ACE inhibitors and ARBs will damage your kidneys faster, all right? So, you also don't want to take diuretics if you are taking ACE inhibitors or ARBs. So, ACE inhibitors and ARBs, diuretics and NSAIDs. If a patient takes these three together, they will end up in the emergency room, all right? That's called a triple whammy. Never do that. In short, stay hydrated always. Never take NSAIDs and never take ACE inhibitors or ARBs with a diuretic. So now you may ask, what if my GFR is below 30 and I can't hydrate? What if I have a water intake restriction? Many patients cannot drink as much as they want if their CKD is advanced because that extra fluid will be impossible for their kidneys to remove. In this case, it will be wise to consider talking to your doctor about stopping taking ACE inhibitors or ARBs altogether. This will be better in order to preserve as much kidney function as possible. As we can see here, stopping this medication seems to reduce the possibility of kidney failure in people with a GFR below 30. Now guys, it's also important to understand that even in these patients with a reduced GFR and or with a water intake restriction, these medications do have heart protecting benefits, all right? Also, ACE inhibitors and ARBs may still be beneficial for people with diabetes and high proteinuria, but with a GFR above 30. I would still consider these medications if you are in this category. But if you are thinking about discontinuing them, keep in mind that you will need an alternative. Having your blood pressure in check should always be your top priority. We will see in a moment what supplements can help you keep your blood pressure under control and reduce your dependence on these medications. 
Before that, very important, which one is the worst? So, we have seen that some patients may still benefit from one of these medications, but we know that not all of these medications are the same. Some are more dangerous than others. So, let's take a look at this study. This study will tell us which ARB or ACE inhibitor is the worst. This is a large study published on the British Journal of Clinical Pharmacology and the aim was to rank ASI and ARBs by ROR or the percentage of adverse reactions caused, which is this number you see here. This should be as low as possible, but as we can see, for many ASI and ARBs, this number is way too high. For example, lisinopril, one of the most common, has a ROR of 7.02, and I wouldn't be comfortable with that. Lusartan and Omesartan are even worse, and at least according to this study, Candesartan here seems to be the number one worst possible choice. So yeah, avoid Candesartan in particular. This is usually sold under the brand name Atacan. Now, very important question, what should you do to reduce your need for these medications? Now guys, what we should keep in mind here is that the side effects of these medications grow almost exponentially with the dose, all right? This is true for most medications, by the way. I mean, a patient taking 25 milligrams a day of Losartan will never have the same side effects that a patient who takes Losartan 100 milligrams plus maybe another blood pressure medication will have. So you absolutely want to consider some lifestyle changes that will drastically reduce your need for these medications. I hope this won't come as a surprise for anyone, but regular exercise in particular is extremely effective in lowering blood pressure. If you go from never exercising to, let's say, walk on an inclined treadmill half an hour a day, you will probably already be able to cut your dose in half. No, I'm not exaggerating here. As we can see, with exercising, reducing your blood pressure up to 12 over 6 millimeters of mercury is not impossible. And obviously, if you are overweight and you are pairing this increased physical activity with a weight loss diet, your results may be a lot better. Keeping sodium intake below 2.3 grams a day is also an imperative when trying to reduce the need for medications. Also very important always supplement vitamin D and magnesium. I talk a lot about these two in my videos and they are especially important when it comes to controlling blood pressure. Why you may ask? Well, ACE inhibitors and ARBs work because they block the renin angiotensin aldosterone system. But vitamin D supplementation can do the same thing, but in a natural, completely safe way. Magnesium helps as well because a deficiency in this mineral is linked to hypertension. Keep in mind that both vitamin D and magnesium deficiencies are very common in CKD patients. Then there is garlic. Garlic can lower blood pressure by an average of 8.3 over 5.5 millimeters of mercury, says a big meta analysis. I mean, if you combine these lifestyle choices and supplements together, you could potentially go from needing several blood pressure medications to needing half dose losartan. And this is how I want to end this video today. Let me know if you have any questions and if you want to see more tips about how to protect your kidneys. My video up here is for you and this is all for today. Thank you for watching. God bless you. Bye.